Hello and welcome to the Successful Mentalist Podcast. My name is Ashley Green and as usual I'm joined with my good friend and co-host Aidan O'Sullivan. How are you today? Hello. Oh, very good. Very good. This episode is so good. You're going to get so much from this one. It's oh, fantastic. It's amazing. I mean, the topic of conversation, we wanted to talk to this guest all about creativity and creating the tricks, but it actually took an interesting turn. And we spoke about some very interesting, unique things that I would have personally never assumed we would have spoken about when we when we got this guest on. He's done a variety of different things, and it's just an absolutely incredible episode, this one. Honestly, you're going to be able to sit back and, and listen as we pick the brains of one of the most creative people in the entire magic industry right now honestly there there's not been a a moment in both in this podcast and also just in person that i've not actually been able to say that yes i was laughing so much that is so funny you're gonna get so much because his, his mind's just insane that's it i've known the guy since we was at the young magicians club together when we were both kids and i've just seen his career absolutely take off he's worked with some of the biggest names around including dynamo he's worked on various different projects consulting various different artists and companies alike all about all because of his creative brain it's none other than tom elderfield hello hello how are you guys you good you well we are we are how are you doing at the moment how are you braving the lockdown ah it's been great i've been loving my house where i've been stuck but uh, no, it's all right. It's all right. Could be worse. Could be worse. So it, it could be. But at least we're uh, we're all having fun on the podcast today. That's the main thing. Um, so obviously, this is a kind of mentalism podcast. But with the successful mentalists, we encourage like a deeper level of thinking. So we really try and avoid talking about the tricks and talk more about the other more important stuff. So I thought it'd be very interesting to hear your points obviously from the creative background working with various other individuals the first thing i want to ask you is what do you like about mentalism but more importantly what don't you like what things you hate to see in performers oh very very good very good question what do i like about mentalism and what i don't like in fact i can't see this where they both actually connect what i like about mentalism is when it's done where it's I mean, it's the same with anything, but when it's like truly believable, I think mentalism is, is very different to magic. Mentalism, sorry. Uh, it's very different to magic. Magic, uh, I, I mean, people have different opinions, but I, I sort of do it where people know what I'm doing is a skill. They know that I haven't got powers or anything. However, when I perform mentalism, I don't want them to think it's like any slight hand or any gimmickry going on, like with magic. I think I want them to genuinely believe that I'm in their heads. And so, uh, that, that actually leads on to my negative. What I hate seeing is when people try to overprove that they're mind readers. And by that, I mean, they try to do just too much impossible. Do you know what I mean? Where it goes beyond what could actually be done if you could read someone's mind. Uh, and I've had this discussion with uh, a, a few of my friends in the past when it came to filming things and they would just say, um, they'll just got someone and they'll be like, it'd be great if I could just got someone and just go, your name is this, your pet's this, your this, this, this. And I'm just like, oh, I, I'm not a big fan of that because although, yes, it'll be impressive for them because I'll be freaking out, uh, it, it just doesn't feel believable. It feels like you need to sort of get that information from somewhere. You need to actually, it's called mind reading. So I feel like you have to have to read them in some way instead of just going up and directing it. So I, I'm not a fan when I see people that just straight up just go this, 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 if that makes sense. Uh, I mean, that's so blase but you know I, I like it when it feels completely believable when it feels like a formula as it were there we go i think that's that's what no, I mean. that's an interesting point do you feel like it needs to have in your opinion like um almost like a a little kind of red herring for people like a pseudo um um i want to say a psychologist kind of uh background or whether if they take it the other way like the psychic route have a, a kind of an explanation that links to maybe divination tools or something like that. So there's something for the audience to pick up on. They can see the process to get to the thought. Is that where you find it more interesting? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I think it just feel, like I said, I feel like magic and mind reading are different. Otherwise it does start to just feel like a magic trick. And it, a trick is the word, isn't it? Trick is that people knows that they're being tricked and that it's not real. Whereas uh, 
I think with mind reading, it, it, it shouldn't have that trick element. Yeah, I, I do. I do like the sort of red herring, the fake ex explanation sort of thing. Do you know what's funny? In fact, when I was at YMC actually with you, when we were doing young, that's young magicians, by the way, because we're really cool like that. And uh, I remember I once did a book test on a, someone away from that. I, I did a book test to an adult. And uh, of course, I was a kid at the time. And they just went, oh, that's cool. They knew it was a trick. They knew it wasn't mind reading. I, in, that, in that moment, I was like, they don't believe I've read their mind at all. They they know I'm doing some sort of trickery. And then I, I sort of questioned it. I was like, is it because I'm young? Do you think do they think young people can't read minds? There's something about age. And I do think that makes a difference. I, I do think if you're a young mind reader compared to an old mind reader, you should be doing different material because people see it in a different way. And uh, and in fact, that is why from what once I did that, I decided not to do book tests and I started to do what like it was like a one page test and I made like this trick on a card box where instead of like saying I'm gonna read your mind at one of the thousands of these words that are in this book instead it was like I'm gonna try and read your mind over one of a hundred words which is less impressive and a lot of people go like well why would you make it less impressive the reason I made it less impressive is actually to make it more believable in my opinion because they go hang on a sec that could have been maybe a bit of luck is there a bit of luck in there or maybe as there's only a hundred words he knows the sort of signals I'll give off when it comes to mind reading there so yes so I, I, that's a lot, I sort of went on a bit of rant there, so, but yeah, I, I want it to be believable. And I think sometimes making it less impressive actually makes it more believable and overall more impressive. If that, it's not weird. That's uh, a weird saying. No, making it less sense. impressive makes it more impressive. No, I like that. Less, less is more. Less is more. There we less go. That's what, that's what that half hour conversation I just said there was. I could just <laughs> that. Less can sometimes be more. No, easy yeah. there you go well it's, what's interesting that you you touched on it there the the different types of material for a younger mind reader versus an older mind reader i know me and ashley have spoken about this before because we've got people that are younger listening to this but we've also got experienced pros that are listening to the podcast and things but is there a, a sort of do you think there's a, a sort of route that the younger people could perhaps or, or maybe stuff that they shouldn't be trying to do i mean no i totally yeah it's, it's really hard when you're young because i remember like when, when you're young you, you you get influenced of course you do you're very highly influenced by everyone like 90 percent of the young magicians are probably darren brown copies which is here's the thing like although that's like it's seen as bad when you're young it's okay and i think i think it was actually darren who said it's okay for now like sort of learn from that but then you need to grow into you will slowly grow into your own character and um i think I, I, yeah, it's really hard when it comes to being young because I, I think you, it's one of those you sort of have to learn for yourself. You have to sort of, like, like I did, like I learned for myself that, hang on a sec, I need to uh, take it back a step. I'm sort of uh, doing magic that's actually older than I, I look because although I feel and I try and perform like an older, well-presented person, uh, I'm clearly not because I didn't have a beard then. And I had a high-pitched voice like this. <laughs> and so people just went, mm, not believing that at all. So... Yeah, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really hard one because, of course, there, there isn't really a good answer I could give for it. Because, like, although I do think the magic that young people do and old people do, old people, sorry, no, <laughs> I'm wrong with being older. Oh, wow, everyone's uh, just tuned out now. <laughs> I, I, I do think it should be different, but it's just weird because, of course, the older people that have been in it longer are doing the best stuff, obviously, you would hope. And so these young people go, oh, I want to do that. But then they have to find out for themselves once they start to mimic it, actually. It, it maybe isn't best for me to do this just yet because it's just a bit too much. Not that it's not a great trick. It's just too much coming from little Jimmy saying, I'm going to read your mind. Yeah. Sorry, Jimmy. There's no one called Jimmy. I don't know. I just gave an example of Jimmy. Well, we've lost yeah. one. <laughs> we've lost the listener. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we've Jimmy's lost like, all the oh, people and we've lost Jimmy now. There we go. Yeah. That's a Sorry. fascinating point. I, I love that. Like, like going back to the less is more, I think that, all of the younger people listening, I think that's such a valuable point. And, and I, I think, we, yeah, like you can't argue with that. Like when you're that age, just doing less to make it more believable. I, I think that's so, so fantastic. Is that, I wanted to ask, obviously you being you, is that something what comes into your creative process with magic tricks as well? Is there, are you thinking along a similar line or? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Sometimes, like, there are, I mean, it's, 
it's it's so easy at, at first as magicians and mind readers to get overly excited by it by an effect and you get, keep going what you think are improvements because you go look but then i could do this and make it more impossible more impossible but then it actually hits hits a limit in my opinion where you go that's a bit too much there's a you need to sort of bring it back a bit to make it more more impressive I, yeah it's uh so it's really funny actually it makes me think of my friend um robert pounds he's he's got a young son and he taught his uh, son one effect but one effect really well and it's actually quite interesting maybe if like if you're a young, younger magician and even in fact older magician instead of like being this ultimate mind reader that does boom i know this 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 if you're known to have like be like oh i'm just do this one thing but i do it really well such as i take a deck of cards and i look at it and i know the order instantly i think that's way more believable and then they say read my mind then you go no i can't i can't i can't read minds that'd be silly but i can just i've just got photographic memory do, do you know what i mean like if you had that character that you're just like i do this one thing for real sort of like yuri geller in a way wasn't it like he said yuri geller he wasn't mind reading stuff he goes no i could just move stuff in my mind and it's it's just more believable than becoming a magician where like I, i'm a magician I, I i i don't claim to have any powers i do tricks and uh so like I, that's why i move stuff in my mind and i read minds and i do loads of variety stuff but i think when a lot of my readers they want it to become really real i think the best way to do that is maybe be specific at like one or maybe two things like that photographic memory just being like that's what i'm good at or i, I read eyes i don't know i don't know i'm not making up people's characters Re read eyes. You. <laughs> that's interesting do you think that sort of strive for for credibility, if you like, actually being seen as real. Do you think that's that's a, a good thing? Because I mean, we've spoken to some people in the past, like this this stretch for being credible. It kind of takes away from the the magic in a way in mentalism. Do you know what, it's do you know what, it's such a it's such a it is it's. I mean, I don't actually know like the right answer to this because it is a it's a it's a tricky one because mm. there's. There are, of course, we know of people in the past that have literally played this real character. Uh, Darren, for one, like he's played like, like, and I'm telling you now, if he goes up to a stranger on the street, he he can literally look at someone and go sleep, and they would just go because it, it, it's fully real. What Darren does is real, but it's it's very hard to to do that because that's literally a lifetime. It's, it's probably oh, I, don't, I feel like I'm just blabbering on. I, I don't know what the right answer is because I remember when I also when I was a young magician. I used to post on Instagram. I used to try and post my tricks acting like the character in my head was, I want to be seen as this kid who's just got superpowers and I could just do this stuff. And so I was there like, hey, look at this. I've got powers. And then when I hit 18, when I realized actually my job, I want to be consultant behind the cameras. What I did, I took all those videos down and I re-uploaded them all. Uh, but the only difference being at the start, I added a... Um, an image of like a notepad of like the idea. So instead of it being like, oh, I'm just a kid who could just, oh, what's that? Boom, I'll just do that. It was like, oh, this is a guy who's thought about this, written it all out and worked on it to make it possible. And in fact, it actually upped my consultancy work because then people saw me as like, that magicians saw it and they're like, oh, this guy's actually coming up with these tricks and he's thinking them up, uh, hire him. So yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know what the. I don't know what the aim of that story was. I think the aim of the story was just like, like you can be like this realistic character, I guess, but you just need to fully dedicate yourself to it. And for me, it just doesn't work like that because I'm too. I think I'm too. I don't take myself too seriously. Uh, but then there is also the side that actually sometimes not being the serious character and literally just being like, oh, I just got these really fun skills I could do. That does also get a really killer reaction because people could just relax around it i feel sometimes i don't know it, i don't yeah. i don't know what the right answer is i don't, well, I don't think there is i don't think there is so i think, I think the way the way you've answered it is the right answer that, we'll say the right answer is there is no answer and then oh, i could just imagine all your mates watching this now going useless brilliant thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what do i do i've got done which way do i go <laughs> that's great oh, well oh. You, you you touched on the the, the stuff there about consulting for other people and like you you had the the flip of you wanted to work behind the camera is there something about that 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 kind of drew you anything in particular or did you just like think that that would be cool yeah I, I sort of started to gain a great satisfaction of whenever i had spent like hours working on an effect that i could then just give it to someone and they could just i just go let go of that and it does the work for you 
And I got like this great thing that when I saw that person, like I would normally be in the background, of course, and I saw that person get great actions in my head. I'm like, yeah. I, it, it was sort of like a little buzz. I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that it's making you look great. Now, that's not to say that one day I do want to end up on the other side, but I feel like I've sort of cheated the game a little because as I've been doing this since I was quite literally 17, I've been gaining knowledge of these guys who have been doing it for years, like tens of years and uh, decades. I should just say tens of years. Who says tens, <laughs> tens of, of years? years decades and uh and I, I feel like i'm sort of cheating the game so i've learned a lot very quickly and uh I, I think it's a good place to start behind the camera like because like i said i i've uh I've, I've, i feel like i've learned the game as it were and what works and what doesn't and yeah like i said i just love it it's great fun it's, it's, it's really satisfying just watching someone else do well in fact there was a trick i made for my mate ryan ryan tricks who had, had a show on five star and uh it's really funny because we turned up to the shoot like that was the most tight deadlines i've ever had in my life like uh, if i told you if i told people like oh by the way uh each episode was made in a week like people would be like nah i'll be like yep it was killer it's the most painful time of my life um but there was, to the point that that uh there was one of the tricks where i went we arrived on set and ryan bless him he had to learn these tricks literally like just before like and he was killing it to be fair he was absolutely killing it and uh, there was one trick though that i remember where i was like you're gonna take this cup and you're just gonna crush it and the magic's gonna happen over there and he didn't know what the effect was and if you watch it back it's brilliant because he just goes watch <laughs> he, got, he got amazed at the effect himself and i got great satisfaction just behind the camera just being like hey he enjoyed it more than them <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant oh uh, it's great it's great i love what it. a fantastic story yeah. and for people who obviously are listening to this or the ones watching online like youtube and that if they are of that similar mindset where they they want to help people out and and be behind the camera and get into that consultancy work have you got any tips for people getting into that of course uh I, do what it for me it all started with instagram uh, to us i was very lucky at the sense that when i went on instagram the only other people that were doing like social media online magic were Caden, who was doing his 365 days of magic which got him hired by david copperfield rory who was doing his everyday magic who got him hired by dynamo and then i started like i was doing it as well started doing it and there were barely anyone else on there and it was actually really easy to get spotted in those days because in those days it wasn't even long ago because social media magic wasn't a thing julius dean hadn't really started creating the uh, the social media magic and so every bit of magic that was seen online was unique there was no no one was buying tricks to do them online. So whenever you saw magic done on Instagram, it was a newer trick and it was made it very easy to spot the like the new creatives coming up because that that's just what it is. But now, of course, I admit like now it's very hard because you need to try and break through past all these people that are doing balance by Joshua J, yeah. which is a fantastic effect, but everyone's doing it. Everyone's doing his routine. So if you want to get spotted and start doing your things, maybe jump on the trends that everyone else is doing but make it a big difference. Like literally take that balance trick and just change it all entirely. Like uh, rebuild it yourself, like learn from it a lot because there's a lot to learn there and redo it yourself. And it's, I'm not gonna lie, it is a lot harder these days I feel to get like found online, but um, th there's nothing wrong with contacting the people that you want to work for. Like I remember I, had, I actually had like a list of like the magicians I wanted to follow me. And I was like, these are the people that I want to follow me. And once they all follow me, I'm happy. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with like proposing tricks to people. Like I, I've um, even recently, I, I've sent a video of a trick that to a mate and I just went, by the way, I made this trick. I feel like it's so your character. And he went, yep, and he bought it and I sent it straight out to him. And it was like, it's, it's you just have to put yourself out there a bit. And like, that, in fact, the best, the, the way I got my big, my big break, my big, my big job is what I did. I went to Blackpool Magic Convention with a shoe box. I've still got the shoe box probably in this drawer. I said this drawer, you can't even see. There's a drawer down here, just believe me. <laughs> I went with this shoe box and people that will remember this, I was 17 at the time, so it would have been it would have been like five, six years ago. Some people may still remember this. I was walking around the Ruskin with like this shoe box, and then uh every now and then I'll just like sit up and be like, look at that. Vanishes. Isn't that cool? Look, look, look at that, changes. Did you see that? Look, this piece from there goes there. Like play with it. And I was like handing that out, like letting people play with these gimmicks I've been making, like ideas I've had. And that's where I then ended up getting called over by Dynamo and I sat next to him and i bombarded the poor man i was there like look at that look play with it it's great look, watch this look, ah, look, look. i was like literally <laughs> throwing gimmicks at him uh, and ultimately i think that in, in his head went oh this kid has a lot of ideas 
we should probably do something with him. And th that's how it sort of works for me. And so I think if you want to end up going behind the scenes, annoyingly, you sort of have to put a load of work in first uh, with very little payout, I'm going to be honest, until you get that, that spot, I guess. But yeah, that that would be my advice. Like, put stuff online, make sure, like, try and, it's really hard to like really stand out and be creative these days. So really don't do another card trick would be my advice because it's uh, most magicians will scroll past another card trick. Even if it's the most creative card trick in the world, they just scroll past. So you need to uh, really need to try and stand out. Like I remember I did tricks with like, my first one I did was with a pizza box. Like there was no one else doing magic with a pizza box. Now I've done two. And then there's like, <laughs> like tri trips with like glasses, melons, crisp packets, like chewing gum, just stuff that, makes you like you go like oh, i haven't seen much magic with that at the time there wasn't much magic with chewing gum now there's loads but like at the time like you would scroll past and that would be the only one only trick with the chewing gum on instagram for the day whereas today there'll be like hundreds of card tricks so my advice would be literally just ch churn out the most eye grabbing interesting creative ideas and then when you get the opportunity to meet up with uh the magicians you want to work with throw them at them just be like look look at this look this is what i do i'm really good at it please and then it'll work out yeah That's i remember that it reminds me of the story of when you started working for um shin lim back when you were oh. when you were right young you um you came into yeah. the ymc and you was like oh yeah i uh, uploaded a few of these little tricks to illusionist and uh, by the way i'm now working for shin lim yeah like, that was oh. weird. <laughs> that was actually for a friend called rich rich and we ended up skyping and it was literally it's got like, it's like this and uh I, I i literally just did that i was like look at this look that changes that changes that changes and he went oh let's have another skype and then we just end up we would skype like every night it was madness my parents got so annoyed because i was awake to the early hours that's that's what i did i literally it's although it's very good to have one incredible idea and like there's some sometimes you can have one incredible idea but just be proud of that idea leave it aside start working on the next one and so that when you show someone you just don't spend half hour just showing one trick because they're as impressed as they may be they'll be like that's incredible i love it i'll get it they they they, they may it's like the classic you, you could teach a man to fish or you know, like give them a fish they'll, they'll take that one fish but if you show that you're really good at fishing then they'll take you as a person not just the trick wow that was a weird <laughs> i took a <it> turn <laughs> yeah weird way of trying to relate it so basically show that you're the fisherman and you're not just selling one fish wow there you go i love that uh, all the comments below are like i've learned how to fish hasn't helped at all well something that's interesting again you're talking about this idea of, of this pushing for this creative side and, and and trying to again teach people how to metaphorically fish and, and create more ideas and, and should get more out there we're going to roll with that because you've said it it has to be happened um and is there a, a, a way because i know a lot of people get protective about their own ideas like i come up with this this is my idea don't copy it don't don't because do, that happens a lot like what you, you haven't even released a, a, an effect or an idea and you just share it with somebody in confidence and then it goes off in a million different ways and everyone's performing it is there mm. a way that you kind of just detach that sort of uh, what sort of emotional attachment to it or is it do you just are you just of that mindset that just throw it do, do what, uh, yeah, do you know what's funny? Like I've, like, I do. I did a few tricks online. Then, like, it, it when Shin started to go online, like, what would happen is I would do a trick, and then he would share on his Insta, and he'd be like, "Could I?" I was like, "Yeah, hundred percent," because it helped me out, gave me a few followers, and all that jazz. And then, literally, the week after, people do dare takes in it. And at the time, I was like, really like, oh, it's like the same effect. And then people like adding like one little difference. And then, and then I was like, oh, actually, it's okay. It's as people just they're inspired by it, and that's fine. Well, it got annoying was then when people started releasing it. And I was like, hmm, it's annoying because that's basically my idea, but you've just turned it around, haven't you? But hey, that's okay. That's okay. And what I learned was, and in fact, it was Rory that told me this. He said to me, um, if you get annoyed about someone uh, taking your trick, uh, you're not creative enough. And I'm, that, that sort of made me go, oh, that's a bit harsh on me, isn't it? And then I was like, I thought, it's sort of like, even though like people are taking your tricks, just go, ah, I'll always make more. I don't know more. If you if you have to like take my ideas and like adapt them a little bit, that's fine. And it's okay to adapt them and do them in, in your own sense. But you know, it's when it's like exact copies and you go. Phew. I do it most of the time. I, I have magicians who message me on Instagram saying, "Can I do this trick?" And I'm not even joking. Like ninety percent of the time, I'm like, "Sure." Like as I was like, just do a little credit. 
don't mind. Yeah, go for it. Have fun. It's when people just like don't they know it's come from you and they don't get in contact. Um, but hey, it it, it doesn't bother me now. Uh, I say that it does bother me a little bit, but I just don't shout about it. I'm just a bit like I'll just make another trick then. I think the one thing that's annoying is when people release it though. When they release an adaptation of your idea, that's that's when it's not okay in my opinion. I think it's okay just to po post videos and if you're inspired by a trick, great. But that, that's okay for you. But don't don't be selling selling the idea. Um, it's a, it's a weird one. Do and it's it's really tricky because of course we see it so much in this magic world and like sometimes it's like what can you actually clone claim ownership of and like at what point does it become one person's idea to another person's idea and i do there's no definitive answer and it's so hard but um yeah I, I think i think the number one thing is although it's our living and it is paying the bills don't get too worked up about it if you're creative just like be like message them saying like hey man did, like, it happens and i message a mate saying like uh saying like hey this is my trick and he went oh i'm sorry i went don't worry all good like, I know you're not a bad person because the majority of people aren't bad people. Yeah, it's do it's such again. Do what this is the most like, people watching this going like this is great useless interview where Tom just goes, there's not an answer to it. Like <laughs> it's, it's it's annoying. I've I've just I've just thought to myself like I've got too many. I, I'll, I'll keep coming up with tricks. I'm not going to get worked up worked up over one. I was sending a message being like, hey, this is mine. Just so let you know. And they go, okay. In fact, most of the time I don't even send a message. I'm just like, all right. I th it's a waste of time and effort isn't it you only live yeah. once let's not cry about a magic trick well, that's exactly it <laughs> that's yeah. it if you can be if you can keep going just be ahead of the crowd and then just always generating the new thing which is which is interesting mm. you mentioned as well um uh obviously people get inspired by what you do is there anywhere you take inspiration from yourself uh definitely definitely uh i've, I've got like a good little group of mates and that we jam together and they inspire me a lot whenever we jam. Like it's it's one of those things. I, I I sort of found the people that I create with well, where I think we are different people, but then it ends up working really well. Like just an example, Noel Quarter is uh, he, he's a bit he's crazy, and he's uh, <laughs> but I love him uh, because we are so different in so many ways. But that's why I think I, I just love chatting to Magic about him because he will say something that I'll be like what. So then I would say something that would make him go what, and it just ends up working. So I get inspired by my mates around me and uh yeah like I i'm inspired i'm inspired quite a few places um but yeah just mostly by my mates to be honest with you mostly by my mates i, I find a good group of mates that you could just jam with and ha maybe have like different sort of thought patterns in fact one of the best ways i started to create with my mate ollie smith when i first started to create was we would uh text like this was like back in the instagram days he's the one who filmed all my instagram videos like we went around london and we'd film like three a day and um He'd send me a message with an idea and I'll be like, oh, so you mean like this? And he'd be like, nope, but that's a new idea as well. And we end up creating like multiple tricks just by, and it's the same with books, isn't it? That's why they say like, that's why the, our older generations say, read books because you interpret it in your own way and you end up creating your own routine or own effects. And I get that, but I also get like, I am a, I'm a visual learner. I, the only books I like are the ones that have like nice big images in them. And then I could sort of visualize weirdy gimmicky yeah. stuff, you know, but, um, but yeah, I get inspired by mates, my mates mostly, I'd say. It's interesting you say that because it's, it's what myself and Aidan spoke about um, in the past on uh, on TSM because it's what's helped me out and I know it's what's helped uh, Aidan out as well. When we uh, we first started to decide that we really wanted to get into mentalism, we created like a little online group chat with other mentalists of the same sort of thing and then we constantly jammed and it was a chat every single day so we could like help each other out and that was one of the things behind putting TSM together we wanted a place to form a community to help other mentalists so I think that's um that's a fascinating point you bring that up because it's something we've been uh we've been saying for a while um obviously you say you get inspiration from other performers but I'm just interested to know are there any areas outside of magic like any sort of extra things like music or hobbies which you know come into your performances um I get, do, do you know what, this is weird, like, do you know when magicians say, oh, music inspires me? Uh, whenever they used to say that to me, I'm like, I don't know what that means. But then I realised, actually, maybe I do. Uh, it's just that no one's ever explained it to me. I basically, what it, what it is to me, because music does inspire me, I just never thought it did. I never really thought about it. Uh, this is going to sound really, uh, I'm going to sound like a right loser here, but I'm going to be honest with you. 
this is how music has inspired me is uh for example i like listening to the now you see me uh soundtrack right and it's so great isn't it's it so it's so good it's so i've good. literally gone to bed with my headphones in and what i've done i've literally laid there and i've pictured like like oh my gosh like i'm on a i'm on a theater stage now what trick and then i'll be like i'd end up creating a trick in my head because i'm just playing it to music and i'm like that's what they mean when they say music inspires them i, I think maybe some yeah. people get inspired in different ways but i've literally listened to and it's normally sound soundtracks to like movies that i just go like i sort of like feel the choreography of it and like yeah. you picture like and th th in fact there's like a song in no it goes like it like powers up and it builds and it builds and then you picture the big finale and then i'm like and then i fly and i'm now inside the car and i don't know so i guess i do get inspired by music a lot it's just weird whenever i used to hear magicians say music inspires me so i went how does a song inspire you and i'm then i was like oh i mean yeah obviously because i'm listening to it and i'm picturing stuff happening around me so i guess yeah music does inspire me not like in fact not i like maybe pop culture music does inspire me as well because i remember this is even sad right oh my gosh I'm, this is the effect i remember when i first listened to um oh god no it's it was after a festival at benicassian where i got to see stormzy live and i decided stormzy is a phenomenal showman despite his music not being what i thought i'd like okay and then i listened to his music and big for your boots it's called for all the <laughs> peeps out there i listened to that and it's got a really nice build up and I pictured myself as like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm Stormzy's warm up act. Um, introducing him. How am I making him appear? And I remember like that. I like pictured in my head. I'm going to say the effect. Picture in my head me walking to like down like this catwalk, bring out a briefcase and putting up a leg, putting up a leg, putting on a torso, putting on the arm, putting on the arm like a mannequin, putting on the head. And then when the big beat hits and the first soundtrack, Stormzy then comes to life and starts singing it. And the crowd just went meant like goes crazy right. around you and like you sort of it gives you goosebumps when you're like you're listening to it and like with your eyes closed and you really picture it so actually i guess yeah when people say i was about to say pop culture music probably doesn't inspire me but it does i think actually maybe all music doesn't inspire me if you just try to picture music to choreography wow i, I went on on a bit of a rant there but i'm not at uh, all yeah not at all. I, so I completely really, relate to you i mean i've spoken yeah. to ashley countless times like i listen to music to then think of what sort of feeling do i want and then i create the effects i mean the now you see me theme brian tyler the, the guy who created it just absolutely oh, yeah. I, I looked him up on spotify i went brian tyler let's hear what the rest of his stuff his formula one uh, yeah. music oh, soundtrack is also phenomenal <laughs> literally he's done so much and he's he's, he's somebody that like when we're, we're we start breaking out of the uh the magic industry for interviews and stuff we want we want big long-term shout from my from my head i want brian tyler on here i want to be sit talking to him about his yeah. process because he's fantastic the way he goes about it is just insane i mean all you have to do is look at shin's act and one of the most important i remember shin used to tell me like one of the most important things is the music like the soundtrack and in fact he once when we went to the murphy's warehouse he did a performance for all the people that work in the murphy's warehouse and uh he was like does anyone have a speaker no and so he did his performance his dream act uh, uh i got to be the spectator <laughs> it's a right dream uh, yeah. and he played the mu music from his phone so everyone's had to be silent just so they could hear the music because it's like it's really that important and then that actually got backed up when dan albion's that like would talk to me he'd be like he would spend all day just listening to music like it's very important to him and he's a smart man and he knows how to get the emotion music sets off the emotion i guess so yeah very much inspired outside of magic music's probably the major one as everyone always says but it, it, it makes it makes sense it makes sense why it really inspires the magic yeah, yeah there's something that aiden has uh has helped me with personally in in terms of my own performances and, and my stage show like he's been uh gathering like different tracks and he's managed to find me this beautiful piece of magic which perfectly sets the tone but in such a creepy and demonic way for me to enter the stage but it just like the act is creepy and messed up but when you add the music on top of it it completely just amplifies it like 300 percent, and it's just so much better and you've got everything and it's a, the whole production value around it and that's what i love about some of the online shows at the moment we've been watching like there's some people who it's just a show but then there's other people who take the extra time put the extra little bit of production value in and it just ramps it up and it's just the production, so much yeah. better because of that i mean it's I, i've been watching uh I, I never used to be into youtubers but then since working with social media magicians i was like 
so I always used to be the opinions. I remember like my dad used to say to me, like, oh, like YouTuber, that's not even a job. Like, it's an easy job, easy job, just doing videos. It's not like I, I, I now, now I'm into it. Now I've watched it. I'm like, wow, the amount of work, and it, they're probably some of the hardest working people I've ever met in my life. It's non stop grind. And then, major thing is when they're editing, it's like that music. Like, they're, they're, if you like watch any YouTuber that you just think is just like a, just go, ah, oh, Logan Paul, ah, David Dobrik, they're just YouTubers. But then when you listen to it, you go, Oh, the reason I'm probably feeling more like emotional that he's like buying this homeless man some food is because this music is making me want to cry. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's in all areas. Yeah. Music's amazing. It's yeah. such a powerful thing. It literally, it's the only art that I found that can cut straight to the emotion of people without ever needing to say anything. You don't need to put it in a, in its own, it just, it sits there and it does all the work for you. So yeah oh, i just no. love it i mean i could talk for hours on music so actually no i, no, I agree it is fantastic. <laughs> so i want to ask as well obviously when you work with other people like other magicians how do you go around like obviously people are going to be interested and i'm interested as well how does it work do they come to you with an idea and you put together a trick or how what's that sort of process like well it, that's quite a, it's quite a weird one because um I, I work there's a lot of things that people don't know about me I, I don't just work for magicians i work for like a lot of production companies and creative companies and so sometimes that there are times when they come up to me saying like we we want in fact one of the briefs i had was we want a new cruise ship show uh however uh 360 and you're outside good luck uh and so we had to create tricks in the, that element and then uh so sort of sometimes restricting yourself actually made made it a lot more creative and so there are times when they're like got quite a strict brief like that but like it's very vague as well at the same time it's strict but it's vague but then there's also been times when i've worked for certain com scare companies and they've gone uh okay we want her to have her stomach ripped open and i goes okay okay and then like they show me around the environment and then it's very precise there's not uh it's not like come up with some magic it's like this is the effect how are we going to do it uh which is also a challenge and then there's also the side where they go right we've got a magic tv show uh where should we do it and i go Phew. so literally yeah. so that it, it comes it, like it comes in all sorts of sizes it comes from like people that just go i want magic anywhere anything show and then they go right this is your environment create some magic and they say this is the environment and this is the effect we need to try and create um so yeah i mean it's it's there's not actually, again, no specific answer to that one. It's, it's always like a little bit different and each come with their own challenges. In fact, one of the first things I do, the, the hardest one is when they say, magic, show, go. Uh, one of the first things I go is like, right, right, who's the magician we're doing it with? And then as soon as you pick an environment, it starts to become a hundred times more easier to create an effect because it's, it's for, I, I've, I personally, I mean, different creators work in different ways, but I find it really hard if someone goes, create a magic trick and I go, uh, that the coin goes through the ruler like they, they, like it just doesn't make sense like whereas if they went create a magic trick in a pizza shop when you're about to order a pizza and i go ah i'll tell you what i'm gonna make a whole pineapple come out of the pizza box because there's a gag where you say pineapple and pizza so that's where then I, I become more creative so whenever i have those broad uh descriptions i always restrict myself anyway and in fact when i've worked with teams of magicians i've always gone okay you're doing because i know it will help them out like i go right right i want you to create a trick that's with a phone within a pizza shop off you go i want you to create a trip a uh, shop trick in a cafe uh, and i want you to create a trick on the beach and it just it makes for creative as well it just makes it a lot easier when it comes to managing them uh, and managing yourself creatively yeah less less is more less, is, less more. is sometimes more especially when it comes to creative it makes it a lot easier <laughs> i love how it's kind of gone all full circle through like what we said at the beginning that's that's yeah, beautiful that it goes back to i guess limitations Magic. again and yeah. Aiden just and wrapping it up there. Don't you want nice there. That's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. No, totally, totally. Just sometimes it's good. Just uh, back to that point. Just restrict yourself, and it makes you more creative, makes you more relaxed, less the weight of the world on your shoulders. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, did that answer the question? I can't even remember. What was the question? I'll be, honest, I'll be honest. I can't even remember the question. I, just, like, I like where that went. I like so where I... that went. Oh, God, sorry, guys. <laughs> No, it's great. It was it was just asking what is your what's your process really when when that happens. So I think it's just so informative what you've what you've given everyone today. And of course, as always, we say, is there anything you want to plug on the old podcast before we wrap up? 
Uh, do you know what, just to plug, have a check out my Instagram. It's free of charge, absolutely free of charge. And it's at, can you see where it says Tom Elderfield? It's at Tom Elderfield. It's very easy. And if I were you, just have a nice little scroll through. I think you'd get quite inspired. There's some, even if I said, God, that's a cocky comment, isn't it? But I do think that in that there, like there, there's some really, uh, some really different, interesting ideas, which I'm quite proud of. Uh, so that's the really plug plugging thing. That's free. It's free. Go do it. Uh, if I was plug, anything that to buy as your mind readers i don't know if you've seen on illusionist we've had an app come out called picasso pro which is based off one of my favorite all-time mind reading effects off the color match uh it's got commonly known now as color match uh, and i used to love it I, I still do love it and that's why that came out and became developed and the uh, illusionists are smashing that uh, and in fact just i've got a lot of projects coming out with illusionists in future as soon as we're allowed to go out and yeah. film them so just just check that out that'd be a uh, just follow time. Be good. just but if, follow, yeah, follow, follow time when you see all the just follow me. yeah it'd be great but you don't need to buy anything just enjoy the magic if you if you want because there's some cool tricks on there some cool tricks enjoy it but just don't copy it and try and sell it yourself that's the yeah, thing don't sell it yourself feel free to get inspired by it and then tag me and just be like oh and i'll be like oh, i love that taking it to another level mate uh but don't go don't go straight out releasing it because you know i've put a lot of work and time and effort into these things <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We'll put all your links in the in the, the show notes as well. So wherever people are watching, listening, viewing, participating, doing whatever they are, they'll be able to to find you. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that either. I, that was weird. I was like, whatever uh, you're doing. Uh, <laughs> and on that note, I think that's um before it gets any more awkward, I think we'll uh, we'll wrap up there. So thank you so much, obviously, Tom, for coming on today's podcast. It's uh, it's been an interesting one. Um, so yeah, before Adrian makes it um, any more awkward, I uh, just want to say a massive thank you, and um, hopefully we'll uh, yeah. catch up soon. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, yeah, all the best in the future with these. Cheers. Take safe, man. Take safe. Yeah. Take care. Thanks. Oh wow. <laughs> oh, sorry, we need to end it now. Get it done. <laughs> <laughs>